Hey, uh, we understand that preparation of sort is a very huge thing in your entire O level. There are only three different methods, but this three method is quite heavy. But um, I came up with some ways for you to better understand and better remember. So watch and learn, okay? Next up, I'm going to show you preparation of salt. Now, under preparation of salt, before we go through, we need to understand this table called the solubility salt table. Under solubility salt table, uh, that's when you decide whether the salt is soluble or insoluble. Why is that so? Because whether it's soluble or insoluble, you will decide on the way of preparation. So, first up, you have your nitrates. All nitrates are soluble. Any insoluble? None. Alright, so uh, there's always a song that I sing. Oh, Nitrates are soluble. Okay, sulfate. Actually, uh, under sulfate, I always say that since S stands for signs, like air signs, all right? So for sulfate, all are soluble except for this three. How do you remember? Remember in Singapore, there are three sciences, physics, chem, and bio. So PB, which is your lead, CA, which is calcium, and BA. So lead, calcium, and barium, P. P stands for your physics, chem, and bio, and it's PBCABA. Next up, you have your chloride. All are soluble except for AG and PB. AG is silver, PB is your lead again. Now, take note that your silver has a charge of plus one. Last but not least, we have our carbonate and our hydroxide. Now, they're a little bit special. Why? Because these are the most insoluble one. The only one that they are soluble is they are group one or ammonium salt, the rest are absolutely insoluble. So this table is important. So let's go on to this portion here. So why is it so important? Now, if you are soluble salt, you have your own method of preparation. If you are insoluble, you have your own method of preparation. So some of you will be, will be wondering, Miss Selena, then how do I decide? How do I know how they are soluble or insoluble? That's when this table comes in. This solubility sort table comes in. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I will mention about silver chloride. Silver chloride. So it's a chloride. Use the table chloride and Ag is silver. It's insoluble. So this falls under insoluble category. What if I change? I don't want silver now. Let's say sodium chloride. This part here say chloride or are soluble except for silver and lead. All right, this is not silver, sodium is not silver, this is not lead, but it's sodium. So all are soluble under the soluble category. So roughly you know how to use this table now. Now next up, how do I decide, or I should say that, so what is the, after I decide whether they are soluble, insoluble, what is the actual method? I'm glad you asked. Your method is precipitation. So what is about precipitation? Is this, some of you will be thinking what is SS and I? Uh, S, S, yeah, what is this? I, S. Soluble solution plus soluble solution. You can also be a soluble salt. Plus another soluble salt will give you an insoluble salt and a soluble salt or soluble solution. Okay, so this is precipitation. S, S plus I, S, S plus S, S will give you I, S and S, S. All right, so this is precipitation. What are the steps? Well, the steps are over here. I call this the four step, which is very easy. Mix, filter, wash, dry. You just need to, step one, mix two solutions together. Again, filter the mixture. Thirdly, you must remember this is insoluble salt. So if, they are inso so if this is insoluble salt, this is your filtration. Your insoluble salt, your residue, will be your desired salt. So filter the mixture, wash the residue with distilled water. Lastly, step four, mix, filter, wash, dry. Dry the salt between pieces of filter paper. That's it. Or an acronym that I actually thought of for my students, my father wash dishes. My father washes dishes. Okay, next up, we have soluble salt. Now, soluble salt is a little bit different. Why do I say that? First of all, you have to decide whether they are a group one salt or an ammonium salt. 
or they are not a group 1 sort and not an ammonium sort. Let me give you an example. Sodium chloride here, like I mentioned just now, everybody know already, since they are a chloride and it's sodium, they are soluble. But sodium comes from group 1, so it's under this category. Alright? Now, how about, what do you mean by not group 1 and not ammonium? Well, instead of giving you sodium chloride, let me give you another example. Copper sulfate, using the table again. Sulfate over here, unless it's lead, calcium or barium, the rest are all soluble. Copper is soluble. Copper sulfate is soluble. Let's look over here. But it's not group 1 and it's not ammonium. Therefore, it's this category here. So this will fall under here. So you have two parts, as you can see. So now, after I decide whether it's a group 1 or whether it's not group 1, you have your own method. If you're group 1, the method is actually called titration. And the apparatus that you use is both burette and your pipette. And what are the steps? Step 1, we will fill up the pipette with 25 ml of the acid and transfer it into a conical flask. Add universal indicator to it and it will turn red. Make sure that you add an indicator. You can use any of the indicator that you're familiar with. Uh, I think that universal indicator is the easiest for many of us so that you and you will make sure that you know that you will turn red because I added acid to the conical flask. Next up, you will need allow to fill your burette with your alkaline because you put acid into the pipette, then your burette will have your alkaline solution. Now, thirdly, you titrate the mixture. You stop titration when it changes color. Of course, because uh, neutralizations have taken place, it will become green. And lastly, you repeat without the indicator. That's when you get your desired sort again, okay? So this is uh, titration. Next up over here. Next up, how about those salt that is not from group 1 and not ammonium? Well, the method will be reaction of acid with an insoluble reactant. Same thing here. Just now, I gave you copper sulfate an example. All right. So, step 1, you must always remember that you add reaction of an acid so you need to add an acid your acid is the one that is that has a fixed volume so i will say add excess if i want to get copper sulfate over here i should have used a metal carbonate as you remember in the previous video that i mentioned not all acid cannot react with all metals so i will re i will prefer that you say you add excess metal Carbonate. Use metal carbonate instead of a metal. Add excess metal carbonate to 25 ml of acid. Now notice it's excess of the reactant to a fixed amount of the acid. All right, so so that you will not make mistakes. So make sure you write this down properly. Second step: filter the mixture to remove. The unreacted metal carbonate. Why do I say that? Because remember just now, you added excess of metal carbonate. So you filter away the mixture to remove the uh, excess, the unreacted metal carbonate. Lastly, thirdly, okay, your desired salt is your filtrate. Now, I use back this diagram over here. The unreacted residue will be your unreacted metal carbonate. Then where is your salt? Your salt is the soluble solution, so it should be over here. It's your filtrate. Usually, for this kind of salt that is soluble, they will ask you to form crystal. So after you get your filtrate, you cannot stop there. Then this portion, the one that's following, are actually your 
crystallization. So I'm going to go on to say over here, part four, your desired sort is your filtrate. So number four, what do you do? Heat the filtrate to obtain a saturated solution. Next up, stop heating when you see crystals forming. Lastly, since there are crystal forming already at the side, what do you do next? You filter again, but this time around filter the mixture. This time around, where is your salt? Because you already found crystal, filter the mixture. Okay, your residue is your crystals salt. Okay, now for this part here, let's go up. I feel that after you add excess metal carbonate to 25 ml of acid, you should always remember to stir the mixture. Why? To ensure everything is reacted. Then you filter it. After that, your salt is your filtrate. Remember those steps as following are your crystallization. This is how we actually do all the different parts. Let me just pull this part up. These are the different parts of preparation. Okay, now remember step one, preparation of salt, decide whether it's soluble or insoluble. Now, if the moment you decide already, then go down to see which is the steps, which are the steps, all right? So next up, we're going to go through the O-level kind of questions. Next up, we're going to go through GC O-level kind of question. 2019, the question goes like this. Sodium sulfate is soluble in water. To prepare crystals of the salt, a neutral and colorless solution of sodium sulfate must be prepared. Describe how you will prepare this sodium sulfate solution from sodium hydroxide solution, a suitable indicator and an acid. Well, basically it's a preparation of salt. So go back to this very complicated mind map that I have over here. Sodium sulfate is soluble in water. They are soluble. So they are very nice in the exam because they will tell you specifically what whether they are soluble or insoluble. As you can see, they already say it's soluble. I just need to go through this mind map soluble and then I have to decide like I mentioned just now, is it group one? Uh, is it not group one? Sodium sulfate, is actually group one from your periodic table. Okay, to prepare crystal of this sort, a neutral and colorless solution must be prepared. Okay, so over here, they ask you to describe how you will prepare this sodium sulfate solution. And they already specifically gave you a starting material or starting substance, which is sodium hydroxide solution, a suitable indicator and an acid. So right now, I'm going to let you see this part here which is this whole chunk that I have here. So step one, fill up the pipette with 25 ml. I don't say acid because you're supposed to mention the acid and this is sodium sulfate. So what is the acid? Yes, this is sodium sulfate. So the acid must be sulfuric acid. Very good. And transfer it to a conical flask. Remember, add universal indicator to it and it will turn red. Continue on, fill your burette with what? Al alkaline. So instead of alkaline, you say fill up your burette with sodium hydroxide solution. Step three, I have to titrate the mixture and I stop the titration when the indicator changes color to green because a salt is formed. And they say I need to prepare the solution, right? So repeat the whole thing without the indicator and that's how you get your four marks. Now remember, because the question asks you to prepare the solution, so I prepared the solution. So this is titration, very simple. So it's very worthwhile to remember the step, and this is 2019. Moving on to 2018. 2018, over here, they say this part, 3B, the salt, magnesium sulfate forms soluble crystals. See? I told you, they are very kind. They will tell you whether they are soluble or insoluble. But I still hope that you will take some time to remember the solubility salt table. Now over here, they ask you for from soluble crystals. Soluble, the salt magnesium sulfate is magnesium and they are not from group one, okay? So I should be using this part here. Okay, so I hope your eyes are on here, this portion. 
Okay, over here they say describe how a pure sample of this crystal can be prepared from an insoluble magnesium oxide. They also gave you a starting uh, compound magnesium oxide. So at excess instead of metal carbonate here, instead of magnesium carbonate, I should say at excess magnesium oxide. Why? Because they say use magnesium oxide add excess magnesium oxide to 25 ml of because it's sulfate of sulfuric acid stir the mixture filter the mixture to remove the unreacted who magnesium oxide yes and the desired salt is the filtrate and what do i do next because you're supposed to form crystal i need to heat the filtrate to obtain a saturated solution of magnesium sulfate Stop heating when I see crystals forming, filter the mixture, and the residue is the crystal salt. Very simple just by following the steps. The 17 paper. Well, well, here says, use the following information to suggest the steps needed to prepare by precipitation. Pure lead 2 sulfate, starting from powdered lead 2 oxide. Let I say, they are very, very, very kind. They always tell you whether it's soluble, insoluble, what is the method even sometimes. So I thought this is a very good way to gain your four marks, all right? But this time around, you start with lead 2 oxide. As you know just now, when I mentioned about precipitation, you need a soluble solution. Now you start with a lead 2 oxide, it's not a soluble solution. So what do you need to do? Well, let's move on. They actually explain to say lead 2 sulfate is insoluble, lead 2 oxide is insoluble, but lead 2 nitrate is soluble. So what should I do? Basically, in order for my precipitation to take place, I need to prepare a soluble solution. Since the lead 2 oxide is insoluble, I must make some lead something to be, to, to be formed. So, and lead 2 nitrate is soluble. So I should form lead 2 nitrate first so that I have a soluble solution plus another soluble solution to give me an insoluble solution. So this one is a little bit different but very interesting. So what should I do? Step 1. We add lead 2 oxide with nitrate acid to obtain lead to nitrate I get my soluble solution ready now now I can use my mixed filter wash dry my father washes dishes now okay so what should I do next in order to form lead to sulfate I should react like the same thing here, mix two solution. So I should say, mix lead two nitrate with sodium sulfate. Step three, filter the mixture. Step four, wash the residue you notice i'm repeating right with distilled water and step five dry the salt in between pieces of filter paper okay now this question's difference is that they didn't give you the solution first you're supposed to prepare it so do not fret i just need to prepare the solution so this is just the extra. The rest are the same. Still mixed filter is still mixed filter wash dry. So with that, we have covered all the preparation of salt and hope you, this has benefited you. Hey, thank you so much for watching through the entire preparation of salt. I hope that you have gained too much understanding. Next up, we are going to go through identification of ions. So stay tuned and remember to like the video.